Ian Telfer's journey in life is a brilliant lesson in resilience, perseverance, interpersonal skills, creative problem solving, and optimism. Today, he is a brilliant mining executive, a position he earned from the insights gained from success, failure, and humility. We came up dry, um, and, but we stuck at it and stuck at it, and I started to learn. That's lesson number one. There's always a path around, over, under, or through an obstacle. We put together this company in Brazil and we looked for gold very unsuccessfully, but then we uh, merged with a little company that had some gold and then we went to Chile and bought a deposit from another mining company and raised money on the stock exchange to do that and then we started to produce our own gold and then we uh, did a joint venture with Rio Tinto in Brazil and started to produce gold there so we started to build up quite a decent sized mining company and then Inco was going to take its gold properties public and so we went and met with them and said instead of uh, creating another company with properties in Brazil, why don't you merge with us? And so Inco agreed to do that. And so we're now up to two or 300,000 ounces of production and we had quite a successful company. Lesson number two, success is only a lookout point, not a destination. Ian stayed with TDX Gold for 10 years, five of them in Brazil. Fresh from his success with the company, he arrived in Vancouver ready for his next adventure and uh, took over another little company in South America looking for gold uh, called Ven Gold, and uh, similar results, no success at finding gold. But eventually we parlayed that company into doing a joint venture in Papua New Guinea on an, on an, an ore body and creating a mining company with revenue, et cetera, et cetera. Lesson number three, markets are volatile. The gold price goes down at the end of the 90s and people lose interest in gold and they lose interest in Papua New Guinea and I get into a situation where I've got to sell the gold assets basically to save the company and so at the end of 1999 I sell all the, the assets and I end up with a, an empty company with no employees and 20 or 30 million dollars in it and out of the gold business. And uh, at that point, I look at what are the alternatives? Nobody cares about gold. And this is when the technology boom was just starting. And so I decided that we could repurpose this company and turn it into a, an incubator to you know, spawn internet companies. And so I found some people that knew how to do that and had done it before, and I hired them. And I put myself back as chairman. And I went out and raised some more money, and we went off in the internet business. Lesson number four, stick with what you know. It went fine for a while, like a lot of companies at that period of time. I think when I started, the stock was at six cents. I think it eventually got to five dollars, so that's up a hundred times. And, uh, but shortly thereafter, when the tech bubble burst, it went back to zero. And so the company went bankrupt. The thing about Ian is he always bounced back. He learned from his mistakes and uh, he was able to just see things through and make things happen. Lesson number five, never give up. Learn from your successes and failures. Refocus and find opportunities others don't see. That coupled with lesson number six, build, care for, and maintain relationships meant Ian Telfer was well positioned to realize one of the greatest achievements in mining business history at a time when no one else saw an opportunity in gold. So I was starting all over again, and that's when uh, Frank Juster and I got together and had lunch and said, you know what, gold is about to take off. Let's get into the back end of the gold business. And that's when we started GoCo. You know, it's easy to say that he, um, from scratch, and we started it together, which was the Wheaton River story, uh, created the largest gold, com gold mining company in the world. And we did it in a very short period of time. You think of it in less than a decade. Um, that was achieved from stand, you know, standing still. That will be his corporate legacy. I think his community legacy may be as large and headed up by the $25 million donation, biggest donation to a university, of, to the Ottawa School of Business. Most people that are successful seem to, to give back, so it's not very unusual. I just think it's an important part of being a citizen. I mean, you're, 
Someone created this environment of education and opportunity and private property and titles and uh, banking, etc., that's allowed me or someone else to have some success. So it just follows that once you've had, you know, achieved that, that you'd want to give back in one form or another.